So hello traders, welcome back to episode 32 of the Forex Market Breakdowns and today we are going to go through some interesting pairs I have beautiful setups which I think will play out as I expect due to some gut feel or rather because I've observed these patterns over some time and so be keen on the patterns I'll be breaking down and how they'll play out but before I start the technical breakdowns I think I want to talk about fundamentals, fundamentals and fundamentals so currently over the last three four five six months we've seen an increase in the number of geopolitical risks in the markets and this obviously falls under the category of fundamentals we don't pay special attention to fundamentals and what's driving the markets we do believe yes that fundamentals are primarily what drives the markets but we believe that one it is very hard to compare fundamentals between two countries and come up with a right trade idea so that's one reason why we don't use it Two, our method of trading does not allow us to hold positions for so long. So for fundamentals, it may take a year for a certain player to happen. And for us, we don't take that much time in a position. Instead, we want to be in and out. But at the same time, we do pay. We look at them and we try to understand what is driving the markets and how the fundamentals are pricing in the moves in the markets. Because ultimately, it's not the technicals that drive the market. The technicals only show us what is happening in the market. The fundamentals are what drives the market. So under fundamentals, how do we look at fundamentals? For us at Financial Lab, we do look at fundamentals in two ways. One, there is the geopolitical risks, the things which we can't quantify. These things include the trade war, which Trump is mainly controlling, and the Chinese president. So you can't really quantify what will happen between those two countries based on an analysis, or you can't do a logical analysis on what will happen on that. So. Those are geopolitical risks. Another example is the oil shock which happened about three weeks ago where Iran attacked Saudi Arabia, the company, and then we had an oil shock, 800 point move overnight. So such things, I don't think you can quantify them. And they'll happen not every single time and they'll cause mispricings in the move in the markets. And that's why it's always important to ensure you have a stop loss. And if you don't have a stop loss, I think you're taking too much risk because such things you can't want. You don't know when Trump will tweet that he's imposing more tariffs or the deal never went through or such things. Those are geopolitical risks and you can't really quantify them. So you always factor them in the market and in your trading, but you know you can't quantify them. Then we have other risks, which I think now, if you're playing using the fundamentals, if you're playing the game using fundamentals, you can be able to look at. There's non-farm payrolls, data which comes in every single month, inflation rate, uh, interest rate decisions. Such things I think you can be able to trade using them, but the geopolitical risks I don't think you can be able to trade using them. So why did I talk about the two fundamentals and compare them? So currently, like for example, I had a position on, on, on pound yesterday. I had a short position because my technical analysis clearly indicated to me that there was a short position on pound. So I executed a short position. But today in the morning there was some an announcement on some deal and the pound flew off the page without hitting my target. I don't think such trades should really make you one, doubt your system, two, get angry at the market or so at the market. Such things always happen. And I thought what better way to share the lesson than to share it with you. Because I know most of you will be caught off guard with such moves. If you'll be trading for a year or two or if you're planning to do this long term, Please be prepared for such things and don't, don't, don't beat yourself up because you have lost money on things which you couldn't predict. You can't predict when certain things will happen. The best thing that you can do, I think, is one, like for me when I executed the short pound because of the Brexit issues, I really tried to go in a very small position because now the risk, on, when you're trading the pound, the risk is higher. If you're trading the pound, please, 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 until you get a deal or before you get a deal, there's a lot of risk in trading the pound. Today it could be up, tomorrow it could be down, depending on the development between the deal on the European Union and the, the Prime Minister of the UK, Boris Johnson. So such things I think you have to pay special attention to them. But when the moves develop, when you, for example, when we get a deal, that means long for pound and such moves will always have a lot of momentum behind them. So if you're sure, there's a deal and you can see the market pricing in the move then it's wise to to come in and maybe capitalize on the move but before that before that i think if you're playing the pound one play short position so you can be in and out within a day or two or three or a week maximum and two 
use very small position sizings until we get a deal. So that's basically what I talk about in geopolitics. When it comes to the other things, interest rates, the stage of the cycle, inflation rate, these are things which take time to seep into the market. Yes, you may get that there was an interest rate cut, but the interest rate cut, for example, you have had two cuts on the dollar, but the dollar is still trading at all-time highs. So as much as you have had two rate cuts, it hasn't really seeped into the market and resulted into the effect. So such things normally take time to play out, but you should always have them at the back of your mind because eventually, no matter how long it takes, it happens. Just as John Mayard King said, the markets can stay rational longer than you can stay solvent. So it's always good for you to be able to know that such things can happen and the markets can stay absolute high, absolutely high levels even if the, the fundamentals don't show that and it can stay there for some time before it prices in the moves and that's why technical analysis now comes in because technical analysis will never show you a high price when it's low and it will never show you a low price when it's high so a combination of the two is also not really a bad approach like for me personally i think i love the idea of having multidisciplinary ways of looking at the market so i have my idea of what fundamentals I'm looking at, I have my idea of what patterns I'm looking at technically, I have my idea of the market tone or the psychology of the market, is it fear, is it greed that is ruling the market, like currently there's a lot of fear and you can see it in the Dow Jones, pretty sideways move for the last two years, SMP pretty sideways move for the last years, we are at all time highs and it seems that the markets don't have enough momentum to take out these new highs and continue going up so that tells you that primarily there's a lot of fear and a lot of uncertainty in the market so psychologically i'm aware that these things also will be driving the market so there's psychology there's fundamentals and there's technicals the idea of combining the three and coming up with an idea of trading seems the best to me but since we have different ways of looking at things you can either choose to borrow my idea educate yourself on all three spectrums or you can decide to just use one, perhaps technicals or fundamentals, but at least, at least I'd advise you to have three of them because as Charlie Munga says, to a man with a hammer, everything looks like a nail. So if you have only technical analysis, then it's very hard to explain some moves. If you only have fundamentals, then it's very hard to time some moves. If you don't have psychology, then it's very hard to know what's driving the market. So having all three come together and having all three factors pointing out to a certain trade idea i think those are the best trade ideas ever that you'll execute and some of you may attest that but with time you'll be able to understand some of these things so that's basically what i'll talk about and now i'll just go down straight and start doing the technical breakdowns and i'll share at least four or five setups which i have including gold oil and some probably three other currencies so gold and oil are currently some of my best setups and then I'll share three other currencies and we'll be done for the day. So I'll start off my analysis by looking at oil and oil on the weekly chart we can't be able to deduce much that will be of help to us in this making a decision. Clearly from the weekly chart we can see we are still in this bearish momentum. We've taken out P which was quite a task to be taken out sometimes back but we've finally taken it out which comes in at the $55 mark. They've started sinking lower. So it's very hard for us to understand what is happening on oil by looking at the weekly chart. But if we go down to the daily chart. So last week while I was doing the analysis, I was heavily short on oil. And I actually told you that I never expected it to move higher based on the shooting star close we had. And you can see on Tuesday, yep, we had a continuation to the downside. But instead of us creating new lows, instead we created a new higher low. So we never took out the initial low which came in at the $51 mark. Instead we respected the $51.88 mark and we started moving higher, closing significantly above 52.5. This led again to another bullish move which then moved lower and closed in at this point. But then you can see we tried moving lower again, but again we were quickly capped by 51.5 and we moved higher so oil for the last two days towards the close of the week we had two days of significant bullish momentum and then yesterday we had this bearish momentum coming in pushing the market slower to touch 52.5 so what do i expect of oil as long as we are trading above the 52.5 dollar mark on the daily chart i'll be looking for this play to the 56.5 
$57 mark. A retest of this line, a pullback of the initial collapse of the $1,000 mark, $1,000 pips I mean, because we have come down all the way from 63.5 after the oil shock, all the way to 52.5. And now I think it's time for a pullback based on this close above 52.5. So probably before the week the week closes, we'll have this move all the way back, 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 back to touch P. So if I draw for you, I expect oil to come back all the way here to touch P. But if that if that doesn't happen, which I can quickly show you on the four hour chart. So if I go down to the four hour chart, yeah. So this is the arrow I just drew. Yep, and I can close it. Now, the importance of using multiple time frames is you're able to come up with patterns, and if you can be able to align what is happening on the patterns, then it becomes easier. So, for example, for the oil two days, which you never understood what was happening on the daily chart, it's clear that we had this initial bull move, then we had a correction in terms of a flag, which if I just clone this one and place it down here, it's evident that this was a flag, so we had this move, touch 51.5, quickly rejected this point and we came back higher bullish momentum taking this pair higher and we had a straight bull move all the way to 55 dollar mark yesterday i saw this short play but i never executed it because i was looking for the long play personally so we had this short play all the way to 53 point 52.8 actually and i came in for a long play yesterday at 52.8 after touching this line and a bounce the third bounce of this channel so expect a move higher at least to touch r2 55.8 56 before going higher to touch 57 as i shown you on the daily chart so that's my outlook on oil but immediately we take out 52.5 which is clearly illustrated by s1 then i think i'll be changing my bias to short plays because long term you've seen on the weekly chart that we're looking for oil to sink lower at least to 48.5 and 47.5 but 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 there is a 70 percent chance of a bull move fast to touch 57 and 70 percent means a very high probability anyway in the markets so for now i'm betting my money on long plays and i'm looking for a move at least to touch 55.8 56 before starting to move lower and the two last closes can clearly show this so that's my outlook on oil and i'll go down to the next pair which is gold so I'll start off I'll start off gold from the weekly chart and last week we cited a short play on gold and at least we were able to collect at least 300 pips on gold before the close of the week and currently we're still expecting it to ride lower. So you looking at it from this weekly perspective you can see clearly 1475 is going to be a hurdle to check out why because we have r3 on the pivot points on the weekly chart and you can see clearly we rejected it one time then we had a move lower but we, we, we quickly rejected it last week and we closed substantially higher at 1485, 1488. So in the weekly chart, I still expect gold to move lower anyway to take, 14, 7, to take out 1475, which is going to be quite a task. At least to touch 1450, 1440 mark, which will be the touch of this third line first. So for gold, I want to go into the long term perspective. Probably we will get a touch of 1430, 1440. And depending on how that move will be, we'll be able to know if we'll be going higher or lower. So if I go down to the daily chart, yeah, on the daily chart now it's easier for me to explain what I have on gold. <clears throat> so on the daily chart I have this correction channel. And on this correction channel we have one bounce, second bounce, then we had a drop, and now this is the third bounce coming in at the 1505-1510 dollar mark. So after 1505-1510 dollar mark, we had uh, this continuation coming in, closing up below P, which is the 1500 mark, and we've seen a continuation to touch 1475. So I quickly liquidated at least two of my positions and left one. So I'm still short on this one. I'm expecting it to roll lower, at least to 1450 first, and 1440, 1435 second. But before that, before that, before we even conclude that this is the, I think there's a 60% chance of that happening. But if we look at it, we also have this line. You can see on this line, we had the first bounce, second bounce, third bounce. This was the fourth bounce, and this was a correction channel. So if we get some bullish momentum, although I can't see where it will come from, fundamentals are pointing down to maybe gold moving lower because of the trade optimism and other things which are probably a weaker dollar is the only reason why we will see 
gold spiral upwards but in that case in that case and at least i'd require a break of 15 10 15 or 5 for me to conclude that we are having a bullish move higher so if we are not getting that bullish move then i expect a move lower at least to touch 14 30 14 40 as a value said and i think if you change the slope of this line again and use the weeks it's clear that again we can be able to take it down at least to 1450 before we move higher so that's what i'm watching on gold if we get a break below above 1510 i think i change my bias and i'd also require at least something that will be driving that move and if we get a continuation to the downside which i think is what will happen and i've bet my money on that happening then 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 there's a higher chance of 1440 being met and that will be a profitable trade so you can see clearly on the four hour chart we are, we are, we are having a hard time closing above the 1494-1495 mark we are just consolidating sitting on a consolidation of yesterday and the day before yesterday which was on friday we had this drop so if we get this drop a continuation currently it's london open and now into london open and i think we'll be getting this drop at least to 1465 first and then 1450 as i've said on the video which will be the formation of new laws so that's my outlook on gold generally and now i'll go down to the next pair the next pair that i look at is gbp aud and for gbp aud we'll start off from the weekly chart and probably probably something that i forgot to mention at the start of the video if you watched from the start is as much as fundamentals really drive markets i think you can be able to time some of those moves from technicals and i'll show you how or rather when it has happened so you can see clearly on the weekly chart we had the first bounce second bounce and the pound refused to close below this level p the third bounce and ever since we've had a move back up which is almost we are almost getting to the levels where we opened the year 1.88 and currently we're trading at 1.7 but we had a slide high, a lower and now we've gotten a recovery over the last three or four months so if I go down to the daily chart now, these patterns become clear for me. On the daily chart, GBP AUD has been very good for us. We've been able to reap the reward and we've also lost some money when we've been gotten on the other side of the curve. So we came into this channel after we bottomed at the 1.76 when we had this move higher touching 1.82 correction, another move correction, and now this was the last move. So this last move from the 1.812 I gave it out on last week's trade breakdown. So if you watched my video on the trade breakdown last week, we clearly warned of a possible bounce at this point. But you can see clearly we had this drop, a correction, and then another drop, which is a very good Gatley pattern for corrections for those who understand. For those who don't understand, you can do some research on that. 1.81 proved to be a valuable level, a key level, and you can see bullish momentum coming in for the last days so this momentum was on thursday and friday why i remember is because i executed a long trade on friday and i was able at least to make this 200 points of this move I, w I wasn't able to come in at the 1.81 by then the move had already developed and it had left me so the move was mainly catalyzed by the, the brexit the brexit negotiations that were going on and when the the press the prime minister to the uk and the president to northern ireland came out and said they could see a possible deal we had this strong bullish move but clearly clearly looking at it from a technical perspective assuming that you never had the fundamentals catalyzing this move then it is clear this was a third bounce or a fourth bounce of this channel and you can see clearly 61.8 fibonacci holding perfectly bullish engulfing and now we've gotten a move all the way to the 27.2 so as much as we look at fundamentals and we know that fundamentals are very hard to predict, we also know that relying on technicals, you can be able at least to tell where the markets are going. So yesterday I executed a short trade on this one and I'm still short on pound unless we get a close above 1.87, which is very possible. I expect the pound to roll low at least 1.84. For me, the deal has not yet come and if the deal comes, I think the pound will be trading way higher. But for now, the deal has not yet been arrived at and we can't conclude that we have a deal before we have one. And geopolitics are really hard to quantify. So that's my outlook on pound. If we'll be going higher, I'll be looking for R3, which comes in at the 1.89 mark, probably 200 pips from where we're trading currently. And that is my next level on the pound. 
So that's my outlook on pound and I won't even go down to the 4 hour chart for this one because I believe what is on the daily chart is enough representation of what I should be showing you before going down to any other chart. So that's my outlook on pound and now I'll do the last pair dollar card. So this is the last pair that I'll be doing, dollar card. And for dollar card, I'll start off from the weekly chart. I think over the last six months, trading this pair would have given you no return, absolutely. I really hate this pair. I don't hate it as much, but I don't like it because it doesn't move. It's consolidating for quite some long time. And when it moves, it really moves. So I think we are currently approaching the time when we move, when we have some big moves. So from the weekly chart, we can see clearly that we have had a bounce on the third time. I expected a move to touch 3,450 and clearly 3,350 has proven to be a strong level. Last week we had this engulfing, engulfing at least 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 candles of bearish momentum. And I think if we get a close below the 1.32 mark, which is the P this week, then, then, then we've lost ground and we may be going down lower all the way to 1.265 and it may happen in a straight leg. So six or consecutive, six or seven consecutive weeks of bearish momentum. On the daily chart, you can see clearly we had this console. So actually, if I go back, you can see why I tell you. So we had this drop and this long consolidation. In this drop and now we came into this long consolidation so if i draw my fibs this was the 61.8 fib retracement and again if we come in and draw a fractal from this point then this is the 78.6 retracement yeah so this is 78.6 and if we just change the slope of the line slightly we get that this was the third bounce on the line and now we had through two days of bearish momentum and now we've had a break of this level and a retest. So I don't expect it to go above 3250. And if we get to 3250 and we get a good, 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 good bearish signal today, then I'll be shorting at least to S2 1.309-3050 and then ultimately 300. If I go down to the 4 hour to clearly illustrate what I'm talking about. So this is the 4 hour chart, yeah, and you can see now we had a break, I expected a retest of this line which seems it will be happening and if we get a good retest of this line and some more dollar weakness then this is clearly 100 or 150 pips on this pair to the downside and if we get a move at least to 1.310, like I talked about, that's close to 200 points. So those are the four pairs that I'll be sharing. Last week we did four, and out of the four I think oil I was primarily wrong, but gold I got it right, and I did GBP AUD, I think I got it right, and the other pair I can't really remember. Today I've done four, so I did dollar card, I did gold oil, and I looked at GBP AUD again. So probably next week we'll try and review. I'm not saying these are signals, don't take what I'm saying to heart and trade using them. Sometimes I also change my mind as fast as I noticed that I was wrong. So if, for, for example, on oil, I noticed I was wrong primarily early and I changed my whole bias and I changed my positions and I actually reversed and I was able to make money on that. So this is just a way to show you how to analyze markets. These are not setups we are sharing with you to execute. But if you have what we have and you think you can be able to execute, you have your stop losses in and all these things are aligned and you have your own system and you can combine with this, then that's a different story probably you can be able to execute so that's it hope you'll be seeing you next time for those who are interested in the course we're still allowing people to purchase the course we don't have a one-time event where we allow people to come in so if you're interested in learning how to trade make sure you reach out to us and make sure you take our course because you'll be able to learn how to do all this and make money eventually so that's it see you next time see you next week episode 33 so have fun make money and may the pips be with you